Hey everybody, Pumpkin here. Today I wanted to bring you a Spy Boost Nilf Guard deck. Um, this deck doesn't see a ton of play just because it is a little gimmicky because you you, you need Kahir to survive. Kahir reads whenever an enemy receives a boost, boosts off by the same amount. So if you play Kahir on the melee row, you boost one of your opponent's cards with, let's say, Garrison, uh, Kahir gets the buff too. Well, you would wonder, why, why on earth would I want to give my opponent free buffs? Well, that sucks. But there's this called card called Regis. Uh, Regis drains all the boost from an enemy. So basically every boost that you throw onto your opponent, you get 2x value. You get the value on Kahir and you get the value on Regis. This can make for some very large point swings. Um, I've won games by 30, 40 points with this deck. It is a lot of fun. The downside with this deck is if they remove everything, you lose. Um, the cards that are getting removed are Kahir, obviously. It is melee locked. Um, and actually, that's really it. If Kahir lives, you win. Um, I would say like 90% of the time, if Kahir lives, it's game over. Uh, the easy way to keep Kahir alive is Avalok. Avalok gives an allied unit immunity. Um, the rest of this deck is built around consistency so that you can almost always find your combo pieces. Your combo pieces are Avalok, Kahir, uh, Regis Higher Vampire, and like Garrison. Garrison's really, really good, obviously, because you need to be boosting your opponent's card. And, of course, uh, like, Rain Farn can never hurt. Uh, yeah. So I'll run through the list really quickly, and then we'll get into the same gameplay. John Calvit, look at the top three cards from your deck and play one. This is very useful with Albrick. Uh, you can Albrick a card to the top of your deck. And there's no Albrick in this deck anymore. I pulled Albrick out. Um, I used to have Albrick in this deck. I cut him because... He was messing up with my prince, and I wanted the consistency. You don't actually need Albrick, because... Oh, I do have Albrick. Never mind. I, I was wondering why I cut Albrick. It, it's right here, but the game decided to flip a card. This is Albrick. All right, cool. This is Albrick. All right, I was... Because the last two games I played Albrick. Okay, anyways. Oops. Yeah, so... Calvite's really good with Albrick. You could put a card on top of your deck and you can play two cards at once. Uh, most notable combo is play Kahir. Uh, so this is if your Avalok dies or they lock out or whatever. Um, you play Kahir and then you can play like Garrison from your deck or vice versa. You can put Kahir on top, you have Garrison in hand. You play the Kahir onto the board and then you Garrison immediately. Uh, this allows you to get the plus 10 on Kahir and basically makes it so that your opponent can't remove it. They can remove it one of two ways. They can lock it, um, in which case you have ale, or it just gets locked, uh, and that's okay. Or they can move it, right? Because it is melee locked. If they move it to your ranged row, it's no longer going to work. But the reality is, even if you get one proc from Kahir, it's good enough. Because it means your garrison is getting double value. Uh, assuming you have Regis. And if you look at this deck, you... I've never had a game where I don't find Regis. The consistency, I, I lose a little bit of points, but the consistency is there. And that's that's the important thing with this deck. Um, to find Regis Higher Vampire, we have the card itself. We have Marching Orders, because this is the only one drop in my deck. Uh, we have Albrick, obviously. We have Prince Vellum to increase those odds. Prince Vellum is also the second lowest card. There are no twos in this deck. So if you find higher regis vampire and you're looking for a gold you can use marching orders onto prince to find another gold the consistency is really nice here uh it also thins very well with witchers um yeah all right sorry that the albrick kind of threw me off but yeah calvite works very well with albrick uh you put a card on top and you can combo off garrison we talked about this card earlier you can boost one of your opponent's card and kahir gets the value and then you can regis to get double value off of the garrison regis higher vampire obviously you want to drain one of your opponent's cards and get crazy value uh do note with this card let's say you have a kahir on the board let's say you're garrisoning your opponent's card your uh kahir's getting large let's say you regis it right so you suck all the value off of the garrison target if they regis your regis back um the kahir will get boosted so he'll steal the value from whatever card you have on your board, and then Kahir still gets the value that your opponent's Regis got. Uh, just keep that in mind. So if your opponent has Regis, it's actually not the end of the world. 
Yeah. Uh, marching orders. Marching orders is here for consistency to find Regis and to find uh, Prince Vellum. Basically, find your gold cards. Uh, Unicorn Kyronex. Unicorn and Kyronex, as I've said in every video, are phenomenal cards. They're very, very strong. And they have extra synergy with this deck. If you have Unicorn in round three, you can boost your opponent's card and you get double value out of it because you get to suck it off with Regis. So, very strong card with the deck. Uh, okay, here we mentioned earlier the entire deck is built around this card. Um, this is your main Avalok target. Basically, your only Avalok target. Uh, you want this card immune. Uh, against some decks, like Monsters, uh, you don't always have to Kahir. Do note that they play Drowner, so they can usually bump it back. Uh, yeah, so usually play Avalok pretty early against Monsters because they can't deal with it. Other decks, like SK, it, it's more it's like a dance. Um, you try to bait out their removal. You have to keep track of like Savage Bear damage, uh, Spears, Boats. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, try, trying to keep Avalok alive is... <laughs> it's fun. Avalok, uh, we mentioned good with Kahir. Rain Farn, so this works well with uh, Kahir. You boost an enemy by three, then boost off by three. Um, so you're getting, what, six for eight, which doesn't sound very good, but if you get to suck that value back, you're looking at, well, 12 for eight, which is really good. Uh, it's actually a little more than that. It's 15 for eight? I feel like my math is falling off here if you're boosting an enemy by three so you're going to nine you're boosting the enemy by three but you get the extra value off of it with kahir so assuming kahir is on board and you're playing regis you're getting three 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 so yeah you're getting 15 value out of this card which seems insane i feel like something's off here this card's really good in the deck Gimpy, I've mentioned this before. I love this card. Very good against uh, Nilfgaard because of Flave Infantry. Good against uh, NR because of Drog on two Spectres uh, and Blue Stripe Scouts. It's good against Squayatal because of Neophyte and they play two of every bronze. Uh, it's okay against SK. Not the best. Against Monsters, you can kill some Neckers. But overall, good card. Uh, Witchers. Witchers are there for thinning. Albrick, this is not Avalok, it's glitchy. I don't know why this is the one card that glitched in the deck. Uh, you get to put a card on top of your deck, it adds consistency. What's not to like? Prince Valum, uh, it's a tutor card for your golds. So for whatever gold you don't find naturally, you can find it with Prince Valum. It's also your marching orders target if you draw Regis naturally. So good card, adds consistency. And this is a deck where you need consistency. That's just how you play the deck. Ale. Ale's there for locks. If your opponent plays Jenge on your Ava lock, you can use Ale to remove the lock and boost it out of removal range and then throw the immunity onto Kahir. So very strong card in the deck. Enforcers. We have the spy package in this deck, except not really. This is... <laughs> Originally we had emissaries in this deck, but I just cut them because they messed around with my marching orders on Regis. I, I really like consistency. I feel like if you're going to make a really gimmicky deck like this, you need consistency. No consistency, what's the point? Um, enforcers are there because usually they're six for five. If your opponent's removing them, it increases the odds that your Avalok will live, and that's, I mean, that's worth it. Basically, if your Avalok lives, you win. That, basically, almost always. Uh, unless, of course, they play like Urden and they have last say. That would be like the one scenario where uh, Avalok living doesn't matter. Or they have Novellan and move your immune kahir but i have yet to have that happen anyways uh it's a good card you play it on turn one it, you can it helps you remove engines good card strays of spala this is here just in case your opponent moves your kahir uh let's say you're playing against monsters and you don't draw avalok or you play them around whatever the reason uh they move your card back with drowner you can strays of spala the kahir back up it's a good enough card uh every now and then it's good against nr you can remove one of their row locked engines and deny the engine completely Calvary, good card. Locks, not much more to say about it. Alchemist, uh, this card has no synergy whatsoever with the deck. It is a 4 for 4. And you might wonder, why am I playing this card? Well, very simply, it's a 4 for 4, and it doesn't interfere with my marching order. So the other 4 drops that I would potentially run, let's say a spotter, messes up with my marching order. So it's just strictly just, it fits, and it doesn't hinder my deck. So we play it. Nausicaa Sergeant. Fantastic card, Magnum Division, fantastic card. Both of these are like two of the strongest engines in the game. So uh, yeah, in terms of play style, try to win round one. You don't want to get bled out in round two. If you get bled out in round two, you're probably going to lose because it is a combo deck. And if your opponent forces you to play your combo cards, you're going to lose. Very simple. Um, so try to win round one. 
Round two, you drive past round three. Depending on the matchup, you can slam Alva Lock on turn one. Sometimes you have to bait out removal. Honestly, you're going to have to get a feel for it. Um, try to understand how much uh, potential reach your opponent has. So against SK on turn one and round three, assuming they have one Savage Bear in deck, they have five points of reach, right? Savage Bear two plus two plus leader with crack is five damage so technically your alvalok is out of range of being removed now they can ping it and then jenge it uh there's nothing you really can do about it unless of course you have ale so uh definitely keep ale against sk with this deck in round three uh the other card that you really can't play around is chironex if they have both unicorn and chironex in hand you can't get around it it's not possible uh chironex is eight damage there's nothing you can do about it. Hope they don't. They didn't draw both of them. Um, so instead of trying to hope your opponent misplays and plays it early, which you, you can do, uh, I usually just slam out of a lock on turn one. Um, yeah, unless of course they go first and they like develop like a spear, then you can't slam out of a lock on turn one because then Savage Bear uh, two two plus leader plus spear, it's dead. So. Obviously, if they go first and they develop uh, some kind of one ping with either um, Spear or Light Longship, you, you can't play Alvalok. You gotta wait for them to use like their leader so when it's off cooldown, or on cooldown rather. Uh, yeah, so you're gonna have to gauge it. That's kind of how the deck works. Yeah. So there's not a ton of power in this deck. Originally, there were also like Knights in the deck, but the problem with Knights is they're not very good cards. They, they're good cards in round three with your combo, but they suck in round one. Uh, and I can't really add sucky cards in round one to this deck. I've been rambling. The deck's fun. Give it a try. Uh, I'm going to have two games for you today, both against SK, which is arguably this deck's hardest matchup because they have so much removal for round three. Uh, one on blue coin, one on red coin, I believe. I hope you guys enjoy the gameplay. Let me know if you guys have had any experience with this kind of deck. It, it can be insanely fun. Uh, do note... Kahir does work with Tactical Advantage. It does work with Woodland Spirit. It does work with Philavandral. So any of those things, if they use while Kahir is on the board, Kahir gets boosted. Uh, I wouldn't suggest playing Kahir in round one against TA or Philavandral. But, I mean, if you really want to, that option is there. Uh, against Woodlands in round three, it's great. Uh, if they're playing big monsters, they literally cannot play Ghouls or Oswell. Well, they can, but you get the full value and then you get to suck the value off with Regis. So uh, you're very happy against a big monster deck. So yeah, without any further ado, let's get into the gameplay. I hope you guys enjoy it. I shall not repeat Emir's mistakes. If he buffed Ozzy, he would have won by two points. No, because he already had a rider. He played a rider in round two. He didn't have another rider in his deck. So, no, he would not have. I need to claim my house. How long will you be streaming? I don't know. <laughs> Your decks are very expensive. What do you mean? Like the cost to craft them? I mean, they're normal, teach your grandma to suck I think. Eggs. You can't kill this, which is nice. Say it in that Across the wide, somber sea, I will sail. You can kill it next turn with Pirate Captain, so I'm gonna go ahead and boost this. It's a little thick, but I like it that way. <clears throat> Maybe he plays Scorch. <laughs> Don't you pester me. <laughs> Not much left. Not that. Mm, 
we're in a good spot. You love Tide Pods? Yeah. I'm no mage. Yep. Okay, we're done here. Uh. We have a perfect hand, other than Regis, but... To find Regis, all we have to do is find Albrecht marching orders or Regis. Or this with a uh, 50%. Okay, Albrecht works. We still mulligan though. Do we? People play Jenga. Magni is fine. I can drop this, I guess. Gimpy's good. So we're gonna put Regis on top. All right, solid hand. It's gonna come down to whether or not he can insta-kill the Avalok. That's gonna make things a little trickier. Do you think Letho is still the same after the mulligan changes? Oh, no, I guess not. Uh, remove all your opponent's mulligan. Oh, maybe they change it. They could. I could see them changing it. So this is bait. Oh my gosh, he is too. Alright, he went for the ping, which means he can't kill this card. How can he kill this? Oh wait, has he played the bear yet? Nah, he can kill it with bear. Mm. I guess I should play around bear. My powers are yours to come Kinda up. sucks. <clears throat> Jenga? Jenga I don't care about because I can just unlock it, right? I'm gonna go next turn and hope it sticks. You want a pack of Oreos? Yeah, me too, dude. Me too. We shall do it my way. See what he discards. Hmm, taking some time on this. He certainly has bear now. I mean, I assumed he had bear in the first place. What is your hand? Really? Alright. Alright, let's see if Avalok lives. Probably will not, but yeah. I haven't got all day. All right. He's alive. <clears throat> yes, he, he just has to bear ping it, bear to seven. Well, four plus the three. Maybe Kahir will live. 
Oh, it's such a frustrating matchup. It's so hard to keep your shit alive. I will prove my worth. Oh shit, he doesn't have it. I am no Nils Guardian. Oh. 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 It's a good Regis too. Do we win? I think we win. I should boost this. He has Scorch? I doubt it. I'll play around Cock though. I will play around Cock. Yes. Wait, I don't have to play around Cock. He can't Cock me. He can't Cock me with one card. Yeah, but that boosts me too. Do you have Regis? No, but it's okay. No one insults Gimpy Girl. I have Regis. It's a thick one too. I shall not repeat Emir's mistakes. I'm not young anymore. How old are you guys? The gods are with us. Thirty-one, twenty-seven, twenty-two, nine, twenty-two, twenty-one. What if he sucks me? Eh, yeah, whatever. Are they gonna be 23 too? Yeah, me too. Well, not soon, but at some point. Can't play this yet, because if he plays Burnout, this is three pings. A bit of respect. You're not talking to Gert. Is this my pass? I'm really worried about playing this because if I play this and he has Burna and hits like a Morkberg, I lose. Because he kills this with this and this. I think I have to get out. Video coming out for this deck? Um, <laughs> maybe, I guess. Don't sure. Pester me. Maybe. Kind of a meme, but it's pretty fun when it works. You guys want to hear a good song? We'll dry pass or dry keep. Oh, 
told you it'd be worth it. He's gonna drive past. Greetings. <clears throat> what is it? I don't know. What are the ideas? Cairo and Uni in hand? Guess we'll find out. In your dream. Why is the most popular Gwen streamer not in first place with Pro Ladder? Because that's not how that works. Lock is fine. Ah, hit it when they run. So it should survive now. Ten damage or nine damage out of hand is professional. It's the only card that does it. Or Geralt. Not your lucky day. We're okay. We can still win this. Hey, listen here. Listen well. I need to roll rain farm after I play this. seven won't pay us in gold pay us in blood <laughs> <laughs> As long as he doesn't have Regis, we're okay. I 
if he can counter suck me, it's not great for me. It might be okay. We have to do this first, because if this rolls this, my marching order is this garbage on one of these, whereas now this can 66 hit one of these. Four. Do we win this? I know what I'm doing. You got to keep peasants on a short leash. Regis doesn't win, because Regis, it sucks me, but I get the counter suck on Kahir. I think we win. Hmm. Easy peasy. Cool.